Hello and welcome to my video for assignment 2, week 4 of online games, literature, new media and narrative. I'll be mainly concentrating on the setting and interactions with the scenes and scenery in the 3 million, whilst also touching on the actions and events in them. We're starting out in the Lone Lands. The Lone Lands are currently populated by a variety of orcs and goblins, unlike the book and unlike the movie and we'll see the impact this has later on. I'm currently at Candace Camp, right next door to Weathertop. There's more than one way to get to the top of Weathertop. There's a nice clear path from here, which we can take, or we can go via the scenic route. A nice scenic view here of Weathertop, and you can see the path there leading up the hill. As we travel up this path, we get a good feel of the surrounding scenery. I feel that the scenery here is quite similar to that, to the book and the movie, a bit grassy, a bit rocky, not a lot of interest though we do have some trees coming up here in the distance. Neither the book or the movie really dedicate all that much content to the actual journey up the side of Weathertop. They use visual and narrative tricks to depict the actual travelling, leaving much to the imagination. Here we find something that is depicted specifically in the book. It's the Hobbit's campsite. We'll just have a little explore of the campsite while we're here. So we've got the campfire in our little dell with the little trees. And we'll have a look around. And what's that in the corner? A little brook for their water to feed the horses which they've got in the book. Sam and Pippin stay behind at the campsite while Strider, Frodo and Merry continue up to the top, which is very different in the movie as they go straight to the top and they all camp there until the night where, they, of course, their rest is disrupted by the Nazgul. As we continue on, as you can see, it's only taken us a couple of minutes of most to get more than halfway up to the summit of Weathertop, whereas in the book it takes them at least an hour, possibly two, of trudging and slogging and they're quite exhausted by the time they reach the summit and that's with the rest halfway down. The problem with having to make the actual journey to the summit yourself is sometimes you can get a bit stuck finding the actual path as you can see here but all is good, I'm back on the path and back on our way up and here we are at the top of Weathertop. Let's see what's here at the top. There doesn't seem to be anyone here at the moment, but there does appear to be a rune-covered stone in the centre of the ring of stonework, just like in the book, but not in the movie. We can then, of course, be feel free to look around as much as we like until we're ready to move on. What's missing here, of course, is the group's interaction with the Nazgul, which we won't get here, so instead we'll have the epic quest Retake Weathertop! We pick up this quest from Candaith back at his camp and we get to follow a lovely well-defined path as opposed to the more sort of grassy implied path back on our scenic route. The first thing we notice is that it's dark and raining. Not pleasant and not a good time to be fighting these orcs and goblins. We follow Candy and he gives us some tips on how to deal with the goblins. And we get to look around a bit as we're fighting. And again, we get to interact with all of these different creatures and peoples. And of course, you get all the lovely added value of the orcs and goblins and their war cries, which are, I find quite entertaining. Having all these orcs and goblins about is an example of how the game differs again from the movie and the book because of course at the time of the Fellowship of the Ring they're not really all that present in the Lone Lands whereas as you're playing the game they are all over the place. It's an example again of Saruman's influence spreading away out from Isengard 
which places the plot of the game in the book, its overall plot. At this time, the Fellowship has started on their journey, leaving Rivendell, but they have yet to complete their journey. They have yet to, or Frodo has yet to destroy his ring in the fires of Mount Doom. The game itself is yet to even reach Helm's Deep. The Helm's Deep expansion is due to come out, and in a way, it's similar to perhaps reading a series of books as the writer is writing them. As you reach the end of each book in the series, you then have to wait for the writer to finish the subsequent book. Fans of Mr. Martin's Game of Thrones are very, very familiar with this problem as he takes quite a while to write his individual books. This quest is a perfect example of how the game differs from the movie and the book. One, you're not fighting the Nazgul, you're fighting the orcs and goblins under the command of Saruman. Also, there's combat on the way to the summit of Withertop. And when we get to the summit of Withertop, there'll be people there, or creatures there, waiting for us because we're there to investigate why they're actually there. This walkthrough actually takes quite a while. Here we are actually seeking combat with these foul creatures, whereas in the movie and the novel, the Nazgul come much to the dismay of the group and Frodo is injured. In the movie, this scene is depicted at the summit, whereas in the novel, it's back at the Hobbit's camp, which we saw earlier. Having it at the summit definitely leads a much more visually dramatic scene. Again, the combat in the movie is quite different to the... In, well, it's not really a combat in the book. In the book, the Nazgul approach and Frodo is tempted to put on that ring, and he does. And the Nazgul are drawn to him, and that's when he's injured. Whereas in the movie, the Nazgul attack first, before Frodo is tempted to put on the ring. And while everybody's fighting, he puts it on. And then the Nazgul are dispatched handily by Strider and his martial skills. Whereas in the novel, they are dispatched by Frodo muttering two elvish words, Elbereth Gilthoniel. These are two quite opposite poles, physical and mental, the tangible and the intangible. In the game we definitely have a much more tangible experience here, just fighting all of these creatures or even in not quest experience, the actual travelling up the paths, whichever which way you come, being able to interact with everything you can see or everything that you can get to, being able to find such things as the Hobbit's camp, as a nice little touch from the creators of the game for us. In the end, I find it's actually quite difficult to properly compare the game with the novel and the movie because in a sense it's completely different content. Following along after the fellowship means everything's different or the situations and locations may be the same and some of the people may be the same. They're also different. Here we are dealing with the consequences of Frodo's actions rather than with the actual actions themselves. The ability to actually interact with the scenes that have been travelled through by Frodo and his fellowship gives much more depth to the scenery and the setting as well as the story itself, written for us by Tolkien. 
Here we are not required to use our imagination to fill up the gaps like we are in the movie and the novel. Here we can go and find out for ourselves if we need to. This run through actually takes quite a while so what I might do is skip towards the end and then provide a link to the full video without any narration at the end and you can go and have a look at that if you like. So we'll skip to the end. And here we are at the final confrontation for the quest to retake Weathertop. We can see they're all scheming away there in the centre. So we'll just let this run through until they realise that, oh, hang on, there's someone here that's not supposed to be here. We better do something about that. And we get to fight some more orcs and the Uruk High, who's the big leader. And something a bit more exciting in a moment. I did actually try to find some people to help out with this quest, but alas, I wasn't able to. I had to do it all on my own. Thankfully, my character here is a high enough level. And what do we have coming towards us? But what are those lovely trolls? Unfortunately for us, it's not daytime, so he won't be turning to stone anytime soon. But we're soon able to dispatch this fellow in a moment. I hope you've enjoyed my video and my look into the differences between the game, the movie and the novel. Hopefully it made sense for you. Again, if you would like to watch the full run through of me doing this quest, again without any narration, please feel free to click on the link in the info box on YouTube or type the link in which I'll provide at the end of this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed a bit and I hope you continue to enjoy our course for the next couple of weeks. And hopefully you do well on your assignment and video as well. <laughs>